just a couple of questions. Uh, I'm sorry, we've run five minutes over, but I think it's really important that we make sure we get your questions answered as well to the panel. The first one, uh, I'll go through a couple of them really fast. Um, the first one, really, uh, Claire, back to your your piece at the beginning, and it comes back to airway clearance, and and um, it's relating to everything we talked about yesterday in relation to CAF Trio. So a question that came in from the audience was, since starting CAF Trio, I found it more difficult to do airway clearance twice a day as positively, I think, producing very, very little in terms of sputum. Is there any advantage from your point of view or anyone on the panel um, to using lung strengthening devices? Maybe Chris would have an insight as well on this, but lung strengthening devices to replace the PEP mask. So you wonder why I put in this can exercise replace every clearance slide because I knew this question would come up and it's one I'm asked almost daily at this stage. Uh, and there is two trials in the way. Um, I need to remember there, the simplified trial and the storm trial. And both those trials, when the results come out, will tell us definitively whether we can... Oh, actually, that's the modular. That's a different one. But anyway, there is trials undergoing. The feasibility study I put up, actually, from uh, Zoe Sainer and Don Urquhart. And it is a big push from the UK to look at whether every clearance can... Um, exercise can replace every clearance but unfortunately standing here as a clinician and as a scientist I can say we do not have the evidence to say but having said that twice a day every clearance in the context of someone who's not exacerbating who's productive of very small volumes of secretions it's worth having a chat to your physio I think it's, it's, it may be something that you can reduce down the amount you do your every clearance you could change the timing of your every clearance I would think you're more productive if you do it after exercise because exercise is known to draw to draw fluid into your secretions and make them easier to expectorate which is why we all cough and clear during exercise I saw another question go up there and you can address it in a minute but everybody coughs and clears some people spit some people don't it's entirely up to you on your level of politeness but I don't have cystic fibrosis and I still cough up and spit when I'm out running so you know it's not something that isn't unique to cystic fibrosis but we all clear secretions during exercise and after exercise and I think we can work your every around that to make you more productive um, after exercise and regarding strengthening there's lots of studies out there that inspiratory and expiratory pressure are actually normal so training those is of no benefit whatsoever uh, mm. in current data mm. nice um, Chris anything to add there in relation to strength and conditioning and the strength and conditioning side from your perspective um, again, it's kind of one of those, in my opinion, one of those one or two percenter things that I think you can get a lot more bang for your buck by being consistent with what you do. I think, I think it all could come back to consistency here and working, working your level. So whatever that is and getting better, if you end up that you're an elite sports person, like a lot of the kind of MMA lads and stuff like that, use them and use those running masks and stuff to kind of reduce the oxygen they can take in. But that's a very specific kind of to their sport. Um, mm -hmm. I think. There's a million other options that are a lot cheaper, a lot easier to access, and you don't look, get as many funny looks if you just kind of stick to the basics, do it well, and just gradually try and increase your own level as you go. Yeah, nice. Um, it sort of segues into the next one, which is really around, and I'm going to read it out as it's written, um, because I think it reads very well. I was just hoping that you might all have some gentle suggestions or tips to get over the barrier of innate laziness. I am sadly very, very lazy from anonymous poster. Does anyone have any tips to help this particular individual or indeed any of the rest of us? Caroline, I know you alluded to being couch potato versus versus athlete. Uh, what other advice, maybe start, start Caroline with yourself. What's your top tip to help get over the barrier of innate laziness? Uh, tell them to ring me. <laughs> it's an anonymous poster no, no. yeah but they, they can ring they, they can get me I'm not anonymous so they can get a hold of me yeah, I think you have to if you want to do it um, and I think it is very hard like once you start doing something and you like it and you know you can actually achieve it I think you know you will continue to do it but it's definitely start small um, mm. you know so like I said, it's Groundhog Day. So like I could start with like a 2K walk if like I wasn't too sick and then build it up. And I remember like before Christmas, our club, we, we were doing um we were doing small little three week of triathlon. So we were swimming 400 meters one week and then we were doing like a 10K bike the next week. And then we were doing a 5K run. And all through it, there was something different happening with me. And then there was one week that I got a really good run in. And then the following week, I couldn't walk. So, you know what I mean? You, you just have to do things, take it as it goes, but mm. 
start small and pick a sport yeah. that you like and get a friend that will come with you and completely understand how you're going to go, whether you're going to walk to the lamppost and, or walk to the ramp, lamppost, run to the next one, walk or do a jog, I never run. Um, yeah, so yeah it's, nice. it's, But I would tell them to give me a, a buzz. I mean, please do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nice. Uh, Chris, what's your top tip? Um, like, again, <clears throat> I think majority of people are inherently lazy. Like, everyone likes sitting down on the couch or having a lie-in. <clears throat> There's this perception of people who exercise and are fit and healthy and even like sports people I work with that are, you know, they live to exercise, they exercise all the time, every day. It's all they want to do. These people, just as much as anyone else, <laughs> want to sit down and do nothing. And like, for example, when I go to the gym, I know I said take the stairs, but when I go to the gym, I'm there for an hour and a half. I use the lift to go up and down some days. It's not like I'm this uh, like beacon of exercise. Like it's two flights of stairs, I'll take the lift and sometimes I'll wait a minute for the lift to come. It's like everyone has these... The days where you don't want to do it and the days like where you, you feel it's an absolute burden, it's an absolute hassle, you're not going to enjoy it. But guaranteed 10 minutes in, you'll feel better. So I'd say yeah. just get like just give it a go. Find something that you enjoy. As Caroline said, if you can get someone, a friend or something to do it with you, whether you're ultra competitive or not, like I'd be I'd be fairly competitive. I train uh, fairly regularly with some of them. So we've injured players and pats, for example. We go to the gym the day on the day of the game in the morning and we'll do our, our fitness session together. And that's something that really drives me to kind of work harder and, and, and like you find what, what, what works for you, whether it's going for a social walk or just finding someone that you want to compete with and, yeah. and it's something that will drive you to do it. It's not, it doesn't have to be all independent and kind of from yourself and self-driven. It can be someone else on to you. It can be joint signing up to a class, as Caroline said, like if you pay for six classes, you're more likely to go. If you pay up front, find things that, that will force you to get up. And once you do start it, you will enjoy it. And if you don't enjoy it, try something else. Yeah. Totally. Um, and what's yours, Claire? Top tip? Gosh, I would just echo what they said. First of all, yeah. anonymous poster, you are completely normal. We all don't want to exercise. <laughs> At one level, we are all inherently lazy. Mm -hmm. and um, It is just a matter of opening the front door and walking out of it. Um, and all of the stuff I talked about, about exercise behaviour being influenced by the people around you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, find a body. Caroline said that find something that you you know that you enjoy doing and a and again bite-sized and I really mean bite-sized amounts repeated um, and then you feel progression and then you get excited about it um, whereas you take big chunks and you don't see progression you get frustrated and that's where we lose um, the adherence so you know yeah. but it is perfectly yeah. normal no, to to totally true and I think like in wrapping it all up we've heard it's it's repeated processes it's repeated habits so I think in terms of habit building there's lots of there's lots of stories there's lots of books there's lots of reasons why I think ultimately for a lot of us when we're thinking about exercise it's starting with why there's a famous uh, TED talk it's more business orientated it's Simon Sinek it's a great book but it really understands why uh, why do I want to exercise and if you can understand and answer that question yourself you'll then figure out the how and the what and the how and the what, as we've heard from the panel tonight, they don't actually matter. If it's dancing, if it's samba, if it's running a marathon, if it's playing rugby, if it's tennis, if it's aerobics, it doesn't actually matter. It's really around that process that's right for you, the how and the what that are right for you as an individual. Um, and that's really what's important for all of us. So, you know, there's other tips coming in. You know, how do I entertain myself? How do I listen to myself? The last comment I'd make, there are some actually great apps for anonymous poster that can help you to build in those habits. There's one that I recently came across, which is called 75 Tough. 75 Tough is really to create 75 days of consistency where you pick one thing or you pick multiple things that you're going to commit to doing each day. And they might also include something that you're doing for yourself to listen to 10 minutes of a podcast, to read 10 pages of a book and to do 10 minutes of your exercise. Or if it's someone like Caroline Heffernan, it might be to run 10K a day or it might be to do, you know, if I'm Chris, carry the cow up and down the hill. So I think really there's there's different tools to think about what technology devices there are there to support us now as we connect with exercise and role models and access to podcasts, as we've said, are really great tools that can help us to, to move more and stay connected. So listen, thank you all so much. I think we could probably talk a lot more about this and there's a huge amount more that we could probably spend and it's just the paramount um, focus that we need to continue to invest in, particularly when we're seeing different treatments coming on that may be different protocols and exercise forms an even more important part of our regime, um, not just people with CF, but everybody. So I really want to thank each and every one of you for joining. Uh, it's great to hear your insights and 
Um, thanks for your participation. If there are follow-up questions, everyone knows where to find each and every one of you. So um, hopefully you'll be getting a few more anonymous posters coming your way. But thanks thanks a million uh, for participating and taking part. Um, we're going to move now just in terms of the next session. So thanks for joining us, um, everyone. We're going to move now and listen to some of the main available support services that are um, available to everybody in Cystic Fibrosis Ireland, all of our CFI members, and what is available to avail of, Caroline mentioned the exercise um, exercise grant as one, but there are a huge amount of others. So um, without further ado, I'll hand over to Sam Byrne, who leads um, our fantastic member supports group and does great work in uh, CFR. So Sam, over to you. <laughs> 